The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to Thespian Talk. Ah, oh, the these. These, these lack of consistent home time is killing me, but, we, we, but I've managed to make it here this week. I am your host, Gomer the Rancing Thespian. With me this week is Michelle. Hello. And we have the cat. Hello, everyone. And we have a very special guest with us this week. And, 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 and uh, normally I like to introduce them, but I'm going to try something different. Spe- special guest, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi there, uh, Kaylin Saucedo, also known as Mars Girl. It's been a good long while since we last spoke uh, here on your show, so very glad to be back with you yet again. Yay! Yes, and 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 yeah, I, I admit, I, I will fully admit that I, I forgot to ask for the pronunciation of your last name, so I didn't, and I didn't want to look like an idiot. Although I think I just shot myself in the foot there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It's it's not like. It's common, and it's not like you would be the only one who didn't know how to pronounce it. I this, this is true, but I also sh- could have done my due diligence and asked before recording. <laughs> okay, so the last time we had you on the show, it was 2010. In fact, it was... God! Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it was that long ago. Doing that decade challenge. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just... And, and interestingly oh enough, 2010 was also the first time we had Cat on the show, too. A few episodes oh after Kaylin after, after, uh, here. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, um, so, um, so, in so in the past nine plus nine years, years, what, you know, for those who may be coming in new and are going through the archives, maybe don't really, you know, know anything. For those who may not already know, what has happened to you, Kaylin, between then and now that you want to share? <laughs> That's a really broad (laughs) statement. Uh, A lot of things happened. Uh, I got married. I moved away from San Antonio and uh, now moved to the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, I work in television now and I do closed captions and subtitles and all kinds of cool stuff. Awesome. That is awesome. I yes. saw your check in at Bang Zoom the other day. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super happy about that. I got to uh, work on the subtitles of. Um, there's a, a series currently running called We Never Learn, Boku Ben. And uh, I've done the timing for the subtitles of that show a couple of times, just as one example. Uh, it's been fun. It's been a fun time. Oh, nice. So, so, uh, so, uh, so what, what's the name of that series? Again? Again? We, we never, never learn, learn Boku, Boku Ben. Boku, Boku Ben is the shortened Japanese, Japanese title of, of We Never Learn. Learn. It's just literally it's the, the same title. title. Okay. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 Watashi Tachi wa uh, Benkyo uh, Shinasai. Wait, like, we can't learn is the literal literal Japanese okay. title, but, but it's We Never Learn. Okay, yeah, yeah, I wanted to make that clear because... Dekinai, Dekinai. Watashi Tachi ga Benkyo... Watashi Tachi wa Benkyo... I'm looking it up. Well, while she does that, I wanted to... Boku Tachi, Boku Tachi wa Benkyo ga Dekinai. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I wanted to mention that because because uh, in, in our in our Discord group, it was sometimes we'll get together and watch anime or whatever, and that's something which if like somebody like say Rosen Rosenthorn is listening and he wants an anime you know recommendation, there you go. Ah, uh, so so yeah, I mean it's like oh god, so. All right, I I, I lost my train of thought for a moment there. <laughs> that Do you ever have one? Oh, oh, don't oh, oh don't challenge me to have a train of thought. <laughs> oh, so so yeah, I think the last time I I talked to you like yeah outside of like things because because full disclosure I'm I'm like one of Kaylin's admins in her Discord and, and we do like and we have talked like stuff that goes on around that but on a personal thing I think the last time we saw each other and talked to each other was MacFest 2014. 
Yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. I've wanted to get back to MAGFest. I really have, but now it's significantly harder flying in from the opposite side of the country rather than just the middle of the country, you know? Yeah, yeah money is a thing. And, and Becky and I have been, I've been wanting to get go back there with Becky a time or two because that's, that's where we got together. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, but we also uh, have been able to make it back. Make it but back, uh, you know, it was it was, uh, it, was it was all good times. All good times. Good times. Mm-hmm. Good times. Uh, uh, but yeah. But, so yeah, so, so, uh, so uh, now uh, now now, now, let's, now let's let's move to our co-host. So uh, 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 Michelle, how's Michelle, you been the past, been the past however many weeks however it's been? Many weeks it's been. I've been pretty good. Um, I think I mentioned before I'm in a different unit in my workplace. So I've just been basically um doing more and learning more of that so the short version uh caitlin and, and new listeners is i work in a place that builds circuit boards and mm-hmm. i've been learning to do soldering and like build the boards Ooh. and such like that and uh yeah we've got the um, the machine that does it like the, the solder flow which basically when you've got the really delicate little bits and pieces that you can't expect people to <coughs> hand solder like a hundred and something panels a day we mm-hmm. just uh, whop it through the machine, so you basically got this cool fountain of like molten solder that just comes along in this, it's like a silver waterfall, and we just it just passes over it and does all that. So I, I sort of run, help run that machine. So one person li- loads it, the other person catches it. Hmm. And oh, yeah, great! So just learning, great. learning different like different boards have slightly different requirements to go through, each, through the thing, and mm-hmm. you know, just learning different build skills and stuff like that. So it's been it's been fun. Although my boss told me today that, um, well, sorry, on Friday, because the guys were doing the deep clean on the machine, like the higher maintenance stuff, and she said, I don't want you ever doing that, not because I'm a girl, but because I'm clumsy. And she doesn't want me doing, working with the hot, dangerous metal because I'm a little bit clumsy. And I'm so gutted about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that, that, would, that would be a recipe that for disaster. Be disaster. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm that clumsy, but I asked... Um, my colleague who I work with, oh, you know, she just said I was clumsy and he laughed and said, well, yeah. And then I asked <laughs> my best friend who I've known for actually almost as long as um, it's been since Kevin's been on the show. Um, the, I said, so this, my boss at work told me I was clumsy and he was like, yeah, you are a little. <laughs> just, oh, just a gosh. Little. <laughs> so apparently, yeah, I am a bit of a klutz, but he well, actually Adam did say that. I may be klutzy, but at least I take take responsibility for it, and I will clean up after myself. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That, that, is, that, always that is always good. That is always good. So, Cat, how have you been the past few, been weeks? The past few weeks? On the topic of being clumsy, something came up on my Facebook feed that I had posted like two years ago. So, two years ago, I broke my foot, and oh. I don't know how. It was just like stress fractures, like three of them. And on, on like this day, two years ago, I was like setting up a box underneath my desk at work to prop my foot up on and I hit my head twice on the desk. <laughs> and I had posted about it because I was thinking about how, I don't know how I broke my foot, but this is probably how I broke my foot is dumb shit like that. <laughs> uh, so that, that was just a fond memory that I came up today of injuring myself repeatedly in one yeah. go uh, mm. but i'm doing okay uh like my work is finally starting to calm <coughs> down and it's like getting into the holidays so it's sort of slowing down a little bit and um oh man it's been yeah yeah uh, i'm not as stressed out as our last episode that we recorded where oh, my entire fun. family health is going down the tubes oh my, my, my lovely grandmother uh survived to make it to her 100th birthday which happened over thanksgiving uh, and we did this thing. This is totally relevant to anything, but I need the world to know that my grandmother turned 100. And yeah. we tried to get her 100 birthday cards. Mm-hmm. And oh, we, got, we got, at last count, 260. Oh, wow. So wow. it was really That's great. That's called overachieving. It yes. Was, like, <laughs> she lived to be 100. She is the queen of overachieving. That's there, you there you go. There you go. So, like, that, like, way overshadowed everything else that's been happening for the last few weeks because it's been like, okay, you just got to make it a few more days, Grandma, and then you can kick the bucket whenever you want. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, and she did. And she did. And yeah, she didn't kick the bucket, oh, but she did make it to 100. Yeah, she made it. <laughs> she made it. Uh, we actually just did lunch on Friday, um, and it was wonderful. Um, oh. And my family is crazy because we just... 
We did like four different birthday celebrations for her, and the mayor of her town came to her house and gave her a plaque and a birthday card. Like, this is the level of insane that my family went over this birthday. (laughs) And I think it's really like us projecting because none of us are going to make it to 100 because we're all going to get like cancer from our cell phones or something. (laughs) Whatever apocalypse happens in the next 50 years, none of us are making it to 100. So we're trying to like build this up. Well, if it's the far end of 50 years, I'll make it. it. There you go. There you go. Oh, wait. wait, wait. Maybe. 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 No. I'm I'm trying to think because I know. I don't do math. Yeah. (laughs) I was just saying, I didn't think you were. I thought I was the oldest here. I'm 700 years old already. (laughs) Oh, okay. Fair enough. Oh, well, I feel like this year has aged me at least ten times. So I can I can yeah. feel that. Oh yeah, definitely. Like this uh. this whole year has is worth like it's like dog years. This year is worth seven. <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah. And, oh. and just part of that is just that I'm over thirty and everything is so much harder than it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's mostly just time. You know. Yeah. 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 Time. A Stress. time I wish I had more of it. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The the stress of everything this year has just been from beginning to end, it hasn't stopped at all. <laughs> and um like now at the end of the year it's starting to calm down a little bit and I'm like, okay. Can I just drink my way to the end of the year? Would that be kosher? Oh yes, yes. please. I, <laughs> if OSHA never finds out I'm drinking at work, is it really wrong? <laughs> I mean, the answer, the answer is, is yes, yes, but, but um, yeah, you don't have to interpret it that way. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Cat, yes. do you drive or operate heavy machinery? Very rarely. I am, well, on the other hand, around it all the time. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. I can't um, stumble around drunk near the forklift, you know? Otherwise, I'd <laughs> I uh, wouldn't recommend it, though. No. Dear my work, please don't fire me. I swear I don't drink at work. You can, you can breathalyze her if you want, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know what? My work shouldn't complain if we drink at work because they have a fridge full of beer. Like, oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, like an industrial fridge just full of beer because we party a lot at my work. Now, what kind now, of beer? What kind of beer? Oh, like all kinds. There's like ciders, and then there's like shitty beer, and then there's just like whatever's been left over from a bunch of different parties. We do like regular happy hours, like monthly happy hours at work and stuff, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of drinking. Sometimes what? we've done happy hours at like 2 o'clock. <laughs> and we're like, this is real bad for productivity. Yeah. <laughs> but fuck it. But fuck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Really good. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. for morale. Oh. It's all right now. It's yes. Good. yes. Oh lordy. Oh, I'm 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 just, I'm just thinking because uh because uh, uh I, I yo I, I, I've mentioned I drive trucks I drive and, trucks, and it, reminds it reminds me of a thing, of thing that happened that once. Happened I think it was, I want to say it was near like uh, Houston, like, uh, Houston, where I, where mm-hmm. I was delivering, I was delivering part, of part of a load. And normally I go normally in I and go in I deliver and then I get out and it's usually an hour or two depending on where it is. This place, this place, I get in. I get you know, in. they sign me they in. They get me in a door. Two or three Two hours later, hours nobody's later, even nobody touched my load. Other people have already come in and out. And it turns and out turns the person who was supposed, who's supposed, to supposed to be unloading my truck, unloading my truck just walked out off the job. Off the job. Oh, no. oh no! It's like it's the, like, fuck? the fuck. <laughs> so I'm sitting there for three hours, and we still have to pay a damn lumper fee, which that's highway robbery in and of itself. Granted, I don't have to pay for it directly. The company pays for it, but still, it's still highway robbery. Uh, and even then, if you have a if you have a load that has uh, load locks that requires load locks or whatever, sometimes they'll just steal it off. I don't think this place did, but uh, although I am I am gonna be forever amused because one of the places I go to regularly uh, is H E B. Which yes, H-E-B is a H-E fantastic bucks. grocery store in South Texas. Yes. Yes. And, and, and Mexico they, and they get, and as well. Yes. And they get, and they get some of their chicken from Alabama. <laughs> and, and for those who don't know, it's H-E butts. And that always amuses the happy shit out of me. Because yeah, because because Mr. Butts started the store. Yep, yep. that's very true. <laughs> I, I am also very immature. very <laughs> immature. I had noticed. Yeah. 
<laughs> but but okay, so okay, so gonna try a new thing this week. But before we get to the new thing, uh, uh, something that broke something like that not broke, long like, before we started before the show, started and it's a bit of a sad news. Um, from uh, the Sesame, from Street, the Sesame Street, Twitter. Street Twitter, I, I, know, all I, I know all of you probably, probably seen it by now. Carol Spinney, Spiny, I I don't remember what how how. I do think it's Spinny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the legendary puppeteer the legendary behind puppeteer beloved Sesame Street, Street characters Big Bird and Oscar the, Oscar the Grouch, Oscar Grouch died, died today, uh, uh, December 8th, 2019, 2019, which is the day we're recording, day we're recording at age 85, at age 85 in his home in Connecticut, Connecticut after, after living with dystonia, 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 dystonia for some time. For some and, time. That and that was straight from the, from the, the Twitter. The Twitter. And it's super sad. It is. Yeah. It is. Because, you know, and while and while my while connection my to Sesame Street, Sesame Street has not been as, been as much as it has much been, as like, as when I was a kid, kid or what have you, it's still one of those, things, still where one of those like, things where it's like, oh, like, oh shit. shit. Well, no. it's part of what built almost everybody, you know? Of course yeah. you don't watch Sesame Street, like, religiously as an adult, most people. And to those of you who do, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because Muppets are amazing. Yes. But... <laughs> Um, um, that having that been said, I think it, at it, some it, point has been a part of everybody's, everybody's lives, lives and Big Bird and Big being Bird like the like focal, focal character, character that, that a lot of people learned, learned a lot of things, lot of things through. through. Yeah, that yeah, hurts. That uh, you know, I actually, you know, actually just, just this year, this year uh, recently uh, rewatched watched Follow, that, Follow that, Bird, that Bird and, uh, and uh, Man, that man, that movie that, br- that it brings me to tears every single tears time, and I'm like, man, this movie deserves so much better. Like, I think it came out competing against other things that very clearly were uh, going to keep follow that bird from doing well at the box office. But um, man, it, they were able to tell a, a relatively moving story that's like clearly about prejudice and racism and finding family uh, no matter where you are or what you look like. It's just this really well-hidden message hidden yeah. behind a bunch of Muppets and a giant talking bird with a big imaginary friend. And yeah, I think Sesame Street's hit everybody. Hit everybody. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. So, so to so to his to, to his family, to his we family, you know obviously yeah, condolences, obviously and, condolences to everybody, and everybody. Yes, yeah, so I, I kind of suck at this at the moment. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I would be you know I would be remiss yeah, if I didn't at least bring it up and, and we talk about it a little bit. Uh, so um, uh, before I go on to the, anything else, uh, Michelle or Kat, do you have anything you want to add or negative? I I like Big Bird, but it was more about Oscar the Grouch because I I thought I thought he was funnier. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Interestingly enough, as a kid, Oscar was my favorite. Yeah. I mean, Oscar is a very. Uh, you can really identify with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that that you know that he might have actually helped shape me into at least part of the person I am. I'll give you a hint as to that part. It's in the name. Okay. Uh, so so a thing I'm wanting to introduce now, just to get a total mood whiplash going on here. Um, I'm I'm calling it at least for now quickie headlines. And it's and basically it's a series basically of, a series I've got five, five headlines, headlines this week, which this either, week, which either say, everything say everything that needs, needs to be said about a particular said, article, article, or, or we, don't, we don't, you know, or, or a jumping off point to talk about something else, about something else but, but I didn't but feel I didn't I could feel like do it justice in the news articles, news articles segment. segment. So, so, so we got these, and I've got five of them. And some of us may have heard about them, some of them maybe not. We'll all find out. Uh, the top one I've got, banana duct tape to a wall sells for 120000 at Art Basel, Miami. I saw that. I did see that earlier this week. Uh, yeah, that's wild. I wish I could get that much money for duct taping a banana into a, a portrait. Yeah. I mean, I, like, and, and it goes to show that there are too many idle rich or too many yes. money launderers, too. You know, because because it could be either way, because they have that much money to throw at literally a banana duct tape to a wall. You could do it your whole. You could do it at home in five seconds. So I have to assume that that artist is probably a well-known artist, and people are just going, "Oh, this is a so-and-so work. Well, we have to throw money at it." Because if it was just a nobody duct taping a banana into their portrait and trying to sell it for that much money, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, it's, it, you've you've got to already be a known dude, and then once you become a known dude, you can do whatever the hell you want, and people will call it art. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like. Uh, like- yeah, go ahead. There was a, go ahead. there was a story. Um, I 
It's one of those things now that I've told it so many times, I don't even remember if it was a true story or if someone said it happened. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it goes that someone had a muddy boot they put in the, uh, like they found an empty plinth or something in the Tate Modern and just left it there for the day or two. And people were gathering around it and analysing it and discussing <laughs> what it, its meaning and everything. And like after a day or two, what, they just came back, and, um, came back in and just took it away again. <laughs> I did hear that that happened with a pair of sunglasses in another <laughs> museum somewhere. Yeah. And there was one I heard about where it was just like a room with like a, with like a with like a glass you could look into the room or whatever, and it was a light that just was on for ten seconds and then off for ten seconds, and they call and, uh, and they were like that's so deep no that's faulty lighting. <laughs> I mean I mean and and to be fair anything and everything could be art if you look at it correctly and and that's you know. That's just how art works. But selling something like that for 120K, either, you know, and, and I actually asked this out on my Twitter. If you were an artist type person and you, and you saw this story and you thought, you know what? If somebody was to pay me that much money for something similar to this, you know, would, would, you, would you take that? And as of before recording, as the last time I looked at it, only one person said no. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is like, "Fuck yeah, I would." Because I've just had a, sorry. Yeah, because by and large, especially in America, artists are generally starving. Because they really are. Yeah, because that's the whole term behind starving artist. So yeah, have a little bit of money to ease that hung, ease those hunger pains, and maybe not have to worry about your basic necessities for a while. Shit, yeah. And you know what? I don't fucking blame them. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know if this is going to be like how deep cut this reference is going to be, mm -hmm. but do you think the artist was part of the Yiga clan? Could be. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, Kat, what, what do you have to say about this one? Art is so subjective and, and, and weird, and <laughs> I try not to, uh, you know, like... If somebody gets something out of it, I guess that's important. Um, but, like, this high art, fine art stuff, I'm not going to pretend like I get it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, I went to the uh, the big art museum in, in, in D.C., like, the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. um, and the the modern stuff, just, I can't, my brain, it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's a canvas, and, and there's one black line down a white canvas and that is in the most important fucking art museum in the country i don't get it um but you know if people are willing to pay money for something that they do get something out of i guess that's that's all right by me yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. although apparently somebody else did get something out of this particular thing because there was an update that somebody just came and took the banana off the wall and ate it yep saw that video what it... <laughs> that's, that's just it's like you're taping up food, asshole. Come here. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's the only way it could possibly end. Yeah. In all parallel universes, that was the only end for it. It's just somebody <laughs> eats a fucking banana. Yeah, and, and of that course that too is yeah. art. Yeah, and of course they got in trouble for it in in all of that. So, uh, speaking of trouble, now this headline I'm going to read verbatim. Oh God. And, and and to be and, and to, to and clarify, this is out of Indiana. Indiana. Elkhart County Elkhart Police County trying to sniff out suspect who stole 18 stole French bulldog, bulldog puppies. puppies. No. First of all, First of all fucking, pun. fucking pun. Second of all, Second of all who, is who is the suspect? Who's the suspect going to be? Suspect? Cruella Deville. <laughs> That's Dalmatians. She. Hey, she, time for <laughs> off in this economy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Cruella Deville's identical twin sister, Shirella Shreville. Something like that. I mean, and, and, and to be clear, it is horrible that, that this whoever this person is went and stole the French bulldog puppies. You don't don't go stealing puppies. What the fuck is wrong with you? Because I, French bulldogs, like, okay, you've got a pure breed that is probably well in demand. You can make a lot of money selling pure breed puppies. That's the really sad thing. They just want to make money off these puppies. Oh god damn! You want to make money off a puppy? Go and adopt one, and put a bu and make and make YouTube videos. There, there you go. That's how you make money off your puppies. Because <laughs> everybody loves puppy and kitty videos. I mean hell, I'm not even much of a dog person, and I like it. So cute. Yeah. Uh, 
Like, there's this one channel that has, like, the Shiba Ibu puppies. They're just all grouped together. Shiba Inu, that Be- yeah. Yeah, that, that Becky has introduced me to, and they are absolutely adorable. Uh, they are. They are. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the next one is going to piss us all off. ICE just quietly opened three new detention centers flouting Congress's limits. Because of course they did. Oh, good lord. Yeah. And everything, every news story I hear about ICE is just absolutely infuriating, you know, down to um, the stories of opening up a, a fake college that people mm-hmm. went and applied to, and then once they got there, they're like, ha, it's not a real college after all, and now you're getting deported. Yeah, this is just cart- ludicrous stories about ICE. This is cartoonish levels of evil, which would be hilarious if it wasn't literally ripping apart families and affecting right. people to this to this horrible degree and making us look more and more like Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went there, and guess what? Even even Godwin himself is like, Nah, man, it, 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 it's accurate. So I wasn't issuing because of that. I was issuing because I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh, that, yeah. that, that's more for any particular audience members that might be like, oh, hey, wait a minute, you Godwin? Hey, Godwin himself says it's apt, so. <laughs> I'm covering my ass. Yeah. Uh, uh, lordy. Uh, cat? What, are we still talking about ice? Because, like, they suck. They there do. you go. <laughs> it's, re- it's really interesting uh, driving around Los Angeles. You go under bridges mm-hmm. uh, very frequently, and then you look up at the bridge, and somebody has plastered on a sign that says "No Ice." Like it's all over the city. This city is not especially ice friendly. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Yeah, I wonder what would happen if I tried to put that one up around here. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> somebody be like, "Well, where can I buy some?" <laughs> <laughs> there, for those who don't know, I am in the South. Uh, so, yeah, they might they might be that stupid. I don't know. Uh, speaking of stupid, guests climb on stage during Disney's Carousel of Progress. Oh no! I would also like to note that people have literally died while 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 working the Carousel of Progress. Like they get caught. Oh yeah, because real people are not supposed to be in there because the Carousel of Progress is all like audio recordings and robots and yeah you're probably gonna get crushed as the the carousel rotates yeah. somewhere what is the carousel of progress the carousel uh, of progress ah yeah. yes so is that carousel the of progress theme parks? Mm-hmm. yes okay yeah and mm-hmm. what it is it is a rotating stage or, or rotating theater whichever one rotates i don't remember which at this point but point is it rotates and you go and you sit down and it's basically three or four time period following this particular family through all of the technological pro- progress that we've made over the years been a while since i've been to one i think i've got it right i hope <laughs> and then you yeah get to it's the end true of the... and then yeah the last one is like what we think technology is going to be like in the future and this is how great it's going to be for the home and and how it's going to really help families blah 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 they have to update it every so often because yeah. then we actually hit the future and they get it wrong so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we were supposed to have we're flying cars at this point in. yeah we're, we're my where's my hoverboard <laughs> yeah uh but yeah, just yeah, don't, just you don't, don't do that. Don't the the, do that. the person who died was a cast member. Like yeah, they were trying to do the thing, and they just sadly got caught up in it. These assholes are got drunk, got up there. They they're fine. They didn't get killed or anything. But it's just you stupid fuckers. Uh, uh, there's there's a reason why they tell you not to do certain things at the theme parks. It, it really is. It's not just because they're getting off on controlling your actions. They're trying to keep your ass safe. Uh. Yeah, there's been too many deaths in Disney theme parks. Like, let's not add to the body count here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I. You know, you. Does any of y'all remember the myth that there was nobody ever died on Disney property? Because I seem to remember that. And when it was finally proven wrong, and I'm like, oh. I wonder who started that. No, I've read articles about how haunted Disney is. Yeah. (laughs) Having worked Disney World, I can see. (laughs) Oh. So the last one from the quickie headlines, exercise makes you happier than having money study fines. And considering all four of us here are not made of money, 
even even me, I probably have among the best paying uh, day job out of all of us. Maybe I don't know. But but even even in my position, I look at this and I just have to say, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Because let me tell you something. Exercise, sure, you might get the 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 hormones and and the endorphins and everything running. And you might feel good, you might feel more satisfied with your looks or your body. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, being able to have the money to afford taking care of myself, whether it's rent, whether it's food, whether it's whatever, I think that's eminently more satisfying than exercise. I, I do enjoy exercising, and I do feel better after I exercise. And then I have to go back to the cold, harsh reality that I don't have enough money to pay for certain things, including um, eating better or doing the kinds of exercises that I would like to do to shape or sculpt myself in, in the ways that I would like to because I either need the equipment or I need the gym membership or a personal trainer or something to continue to go down that path. And then... Um, yeah, it's tunnel vision. From yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. And I, I know some people be like, well, you just go for a walk. Listen, I live in the taint of Florida, okay? And if, if it's during the goddamn summer, I will be melting my everything off walking just two houses down. I ain't doing that here. I mean, I could do it up in, like, Chicago or Indianapolis or wherever where it's, co- where it's relatively cooler. But I ain't doing it down here. Uh uh-uh. uh. Fuck that shit. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure in, in, in LA it's not much better. Uh, heat wise, right? Uh, it, it can be kind of bad depending on the time of the year, especially right in the middle of the year, you know. Um, right now it's relatively cool. Uh, not freezing. It actually did freeze for like a day. And then oh, it wow. got over it. Uh, it's been really rainy, actually, ever since um, whatever this big winter thing came across the whole country with. Um, and, like, the cold didn't get all the way down here, but it did get wet. So um, it's kind of miserable. Uh, but, yeah, like, if, if we're talking about, um, let's say from, I don't know, May into uh, September, maybe even early October. Yeah, it's pretty warm. Not gonna lie, it's pretty warm. But uh, I'm also kind of close to the ocean. Not yeah. like I can see it, but, you know, close enough. Um, and that keeps temperatures relatively cool. And then on the other side, it's blocked by mountains. So even though it does get warm, unless it's one of these, like, hottest days of the year, and we do get those where it's scorching up over 100 degrees, um, you know, it sits, like, 70s and 80s a lot of the year. It's actually not so terrible. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, and 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 of course, where where uh, Cat and Michelle live, they probably have. Uh, well, I don't know how it. I don't know how they are mostly during the summer, but during the winter. <laughs> uh, well, we're very cold at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, our our winters tend to be like we'll have we get the um what do they call that thing that's around now the polar vortex. Yes, yeah. that. So we've been getting that the last few years where we'll have weeks on end of sub-zero temperatures. And then during the summer, it's like several months of dipping into the 90s and hundreds. And it's, this is a terrible place to live. Don't live in the Midwest. Like, it (laughs) sucks. The allergies are real bad. There's, I think, I think last year on, uh, they said we had four hours of spring. (laughs) <laughs> oh, damn. Like, like they, they measured out what the, the average temperature of the spring should be, and they averaged it out to how much we had gotten that, and it would aver- it was about four hours across the spring. Wow. It, was like, it was really stupid. <laughs> like, the temperatures here make no sense. Like, oh, oh, man. Like, all March, we kept getting, like, snow on a Sunday, and we're like, why? <sighs> it's mm-hmm. this, this whole year... Oh my god, the temperatures here are really stupid. Don't don't live here. Yeah, <laughs> because we have about probably six good days of weather a year, and everything in between is some extreme. Like the the nicest temperature days all year, we've been in like floods. Ooh. We've just been flooding all year. 
So it's either freezing so, or flooding. It's freezing, yeah. sweltering, or flooding. And the sweltering, this is the most Midwestern thing to say, but the sweltering wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the humidity. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's it's like 90 degrees and then 100% humidity, and there's like water everywhere around you. And you're like, yeah. oh. I'm going to die from mosquitoes. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Uh, so with that, we are going to go ahead and take our break, and when we come back, we will have our news, and there's a bunch to go through, including one that is important in the grand scheme of things, but also important to me personally. So uh, we'll be back. Hey folks, we'll get back to the show in a moment, but first I want to tell you about Patreon. Uh, Patreon is what I use to get around all of the YouTube ad- adpocalypse bullshit, and while I don't have a lot right now, every little bit does help. And if you like what you hear or what you see on any of my videos or podcasts, head on over there for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all of these things early before anybody else does, and you can get them completely ad-free. Yeah, I know YouTube right now is technically ad-free, but at some point I'm probably going to get big enough to where ads will start coming in. And those can be annoying, so you want to avoid that, right? If you go ahead and go now over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx, leave a dollar, five dollars, doesn't matter how much, you can get all of these, again, you can get them early, and you get them without ads, even when I've reached the point on YouTube to where ads can be put on these videos. So it's a win-win. And you can even avoid the ads that go up on the Anchor versions that go out to all of the other websites that are out there. No ads! It's great! Uh, so that's patreon.com slash gomer21xx. I'm going to take the segment this week, take this opportunity to talk a little bit more in depth about the Patreon. I know for everybody who gets it publicly, you got the Patreon ad there. So so apologies for making a little bit more about Patreon. But um, I, I do want to kind of just like put it out there publicly. And, 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 and I'll only do it like once per month um, or, or if it ends up being a monthly schedule maybe once every two or three episodes it's not going to be an, an, a constant thing every episode that's i can promise but i do want to talk a little bit more about it in depth because quite frankly i you know I, i've mentioned plenty of times on the show that my day job is driving around and and i've kind of i, I may have done so this episode as well made a little clear that it's dissatisfying um and at the end of the day i this is what i would like to do with my life um, do this full time, be able to make a living at it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I can't, I, I can't do it alone. So I, I do need a little bit of help, and that's you well, know, that's where the Patreon comes in. And and I'm I'm working on the the tiers. Like if you if you're a Patreon supporter, you already get access to the curtain calls, uh, the curtain call segments that nobody else gets access to. Um, so and and that's at any level. Um, might do some other audio things for higher levels or what have you that, that are strictly for higher tiered patrons, but that's, you know, that, that'll have to come whenever I can. Um, but of course the more patrons that we're able to get to do, you know, to support the show and support just what I do on, you know, overall, you know, the more stuff that I can put out, the, the you know, hell, the more time I can dedicate to it. Um, you know, hell, if I made just even 60% of what I do driving a truck doing this, I, w- I would be happy. Just, I would I would honestly be happy. Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> kind of kind of a little vulnerable moment talking, and, and I guess Patreon was more of a jumping off point, I suppose. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of here and there. Um, I'm sick of driving. Uh, so, if, so please help support the show is support me so I can get off the road and dedicate to this and doing all of the good things. Um, well, well, for a given value of good. <laughs> I hope you, I, okay. Okay. So I do hope you guys have been enjoying this episode. I hope you enjoy the last part of the episode. Um, it's been, it's really nice to have a guest on that isn't a fill in for a co-host. Um, and what, who better to have than Kaylin pop on, and because uh, she was the first one when I, you know, when I started putting these on Blip back in 2010, and now restarting the whole guest thing, let her be the first. <laughs> uh, Kay- Kaylin is good people. Um, so yeah, if, if you know, 
if you see her on the social medias or whatever, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, give her a follow. She's, she is, she is really good peoples. Um, so yeah, uh, I, and, and if there's some people you might want to hear on the show at some point, I can't guarantee it considering the, um, considering just the, the, the lack of consistency with my home time, but I can, I can promise to try to get certain guests on if you guys have any ideas or what have you. Um, now, obviously you, you guys who have been listening for a while, you know who I would want to have on, who I would not want to have on. I think you would have a little bit of a pulse on that one. Um, but you know, you know, I do, you know, there are some that I won't have on, but again, you guys, if you've been listening for a while, you kind of guess who that might be. Um, or at least the kinds of people that might be. Um, but yeah, again, suggestions are always welcome. Uh, just tweet at me or tweet at the show, Thess Talk Show. Uh, you might, hell, just tweet at that. It'll keep it separate. Um, but yeah, I've been rambling a bit. Uh, thanks for listening. I <laughs> hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Talk to you next time. And we are back from our break. And we've got some news to look at. And before we get to that, I do want to actually make a note of the of the uh, segment that I do, in, you know, for the break or what have you. Um, you'll probably notice that my voice is a little bit more shot in that compared to the rest of the show. It's because it's of the rest of the show. <laughs> I've probably mentioned it in a thing before, but I wanted to mention it here just because it amuses. Because somebody's going to find it amusing, I guess. Uh, or some of them might be like, hey, what the hell? That's why. Uh uh, I, I, most people probably get it, though. Anyway, so, our top news story, which, this is another interesting thing. It's it's more of a back-end thing, so I'm letting y'all in on a little bit uh, inside baseball. <coughs> Mostly, what I do is one, for us, for us, in our file, it's one link for one particular story. This particular one, I got put, to, I cobbled together from two different links, and, 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 and trust me, it, it all, it, it all tracks together. So, so I've mentioned I've before been that been I been drive, drive a truck as my day job, quote unquote, quote unquote day job. Day job. Um, um, and I and used to drive for a company for a called Celadon, Celadon, which was based out of Indianapolis. This is important because Celadon Group will file for bankruptcy protection under Chapter 11 no later than Wednesday, December 11th, according to internal, re- uh, internal sources, though other sources say December 8th, which is the day we're recording this. Uh, the Indianapolis-based publicly traded trucking carrier employed more than 3,200 drivers and took in more than $1 billion in gross revenue as recently as 2015. So right before – see, see, that's the thing. I started working for them in 2016 and went all downhill. Oh, no. <laughs> nah, it's not my fault, trust me. I, 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 I'm, I am definitely being self-deprecating there. So um, you say. Yes. <laughs> More recent numbers are difficult to come by because Celadon had to restate its financial reporting after mismanagement and a complex accounting scandal that ultimately resulted in former executives being indicted on securities fraud charges on December 5th. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Ah, but the imminent bankruptcy's immediate, immediate cause was a technical default on Celadon's covenants, the agreements between borrowers and lenders that can define requirements for cash reserves and earnings. Celadon entered the week with scant cash in its accounts to con- continue operations, but was negotiating with creditors Luminous and Blue Torch to secure further financing. Those talks fell through on December 4th when talks between Blue Torch and Luminous broke down over collateral issues. Blue Torch owned 70% of the debt and Luminous owned 30%. And here is what got me to put this in the, in the show. In addition, drivers for Celadon appear to have been the last ones to find out about the company's imminent bankruptcy and shutdown of its over-the-road trucking operation, leaving many of them stranded on highways with no instructions on how to dispose of their rigs and freight or assistance getting home. Oh, no. That is some fucking bullshit. Well, aren't you glad you're not associated with them anymore? Yeah. I mean, granted, the reason I don't work for them anymore is because, well, I basically slid on ice and rear-ended another semi at 65 miles an hour. Obviously, I'm okay. But <laughs> but it was, a, it was scary as shit. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody's okay. No word on the other individual. Well, no, they're fine. They, they're the one, they just they just have some whiplash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but uh, some of Celadon's competitors are stepping into the breach to help drivers get home. Thank you to those other companies. But before they abandon their vehicles, there are steps they should take to protect themselves from liability. Experts say. And you know, who knows? There might be a driver who, in this situation, be like, "Oh, hey." You know, so also good for future reference. Company drivers, which is, you know, your basic run of the mill, uh, need to find a safe location to park the truck, like truck stop, rest stop, you know, whatever. Take pictures of the truck, hide the keys, document the location and where the keys are, and send all that information to the company. Uh, Cassandra Gaines, a transportation attorney and head of Gaines Law Group LLC in Scottsdale, Arizona, said in a phone interview. She wait, 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 wait. You, they just want you to, to hide the keys just somewhere at the truck stop. And I, I realize that is probably the best solution, but that's a really shitty situation to be in. It is! Just uh, look under this cactus, um, and you're going to find the keys, because nobody's going to look under the cactus. Yeah. Um, it's under a giant key. Yeah. I would, I, would, I, would assume it was be, I would assume it would be somewhere on the truck. Um, but you know no, what? No, I'd it... hide it in a trash can. Let them scramble. Oh, oh, God, yes. That might that might even be better. Or better yet, if you're like me and you have a trash can on the truck, hide it in that trash can and make sure you fill it up with the most disgusting shit you can. No, Therefore, just hide it in a trash can that's going to get taken out and then let them search and then not find it because they're shitty people and they deserve to be punished. <laughs> you know what? You got a better idea than me. <laughs> Uh, I would I would put a caveat on that so long as it um, whatever you um, transporting isn't living. Yeah. Oh, of course, definitely. <laughs> oh my uh, god! What if it was like chickens? Oh, oh lordy! No. <laughs> Give it to a chicken. We'll yeah. Never find it. Like you weren't you weren't transporting livestock ever, were you? Uh, no. Uh, no. Actually, I've never transported livestock. Now I now I currently transport like processed chicken, but never like live chickens. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. So, so thankfully, I, I don't do that. Uh, we don't do that. Um, uh, uh, Cassandra Gaines uh, said that you know trucks should not be left on the side of the road because of the danger of being hit by another vehicle. Good point. Uh, drivers are on their own to find bus, air, rail, or other transportation home, but she keep receipts because there may be options to file as a creditor with a bankruptcy court depending on their state of employment. Independent owner-operators who provided service to Celadon are contractually obligated to complete their assignment, Gaines advised, but should keep their receipts because they can submit any expenses for possible reimbursement or sue in small claims court. Any And drivers owed unpaid wages should file a claim in bankruptcy court, although there's no guarantee they will get any money, she said. Because a couple of assholes... Now, now the history of Celadon, the, the original CEO, uh, Mr. Russell... He, he retired, like, but around the time that I started, so 2015, 2016. And it was the people who took over from him are the ones that, that, are being, that have been indicted on the fraud charges. So they're playing fast and loose with the money that's supposed to go back into the company. And I will say this. While I was working there, the Indianapolis location, you have the main terminal, with, with ha- which has the shop and all of that. But there's also a dorm where drivers could go and they could just like take a night away from the truck or if their truck's in the shop that's free lodging right there although the beds suck believe me i know this um and all of that and of course it takes a whole lot of money to do that but apparently they were writing checks that they could not cash even though they are i think they are like, again 3200 drivers working and that's running too loads. many yeah you know and w- at least when I was working with them, they managed to get the paychecks out on time. It wasn't the best pay in the industry, but it was all right. Um, so things obviously went very downhill since January. Uh, so, yeah. So to all those drivers, if you're listening, if you're not listening, I am with you guys. Fuck the, fuck the CEOs that screwed everybody over. Because all of these jobs, and it's not just driving jobs too, but you also got the back end jobs too, um, and to the point to where, as of the time of this of this recording, you know the drivers that are stranded can't even like take the truck to like a, a nearby terminal or anything because their fuel cards were shut off, and you know, and they, and and by the way, if you want to fill up a semi tank, you're looking at five six hundred dollars depending on your state and how big your tanks are. 
So yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. So, so so basically, to the CEOs who who did all of this, fuck all of y'all. Fuck you both. Cause cause it's just ah, uh, it's deplorable. And again, Celadon is is huge. Like as in, you know, one of the one of the biggest things. In fact, uh, you know, it's just ah. Uh, I've I've got I've got nothing else to to say. Uh, uh, who, who wants to who start wants taking to this one? This one? <laughs> if you've got anything, I can to add. I can understand why you would be so upset, especially when you consider it hits so close to home for you. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I absolutely understand how um, realizing that your company's been jerking you around, and then you go, ah, oh, I knew there was a problem because they just announced publicly that they're going through this bankruptcy. But yo, man. Tell your tell your employees something. Give them a chance yeah. to uh, to go someplace else. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was going to ask. Um, what's the pay structure like? Is it like a like end of the month, beginning of the month thing? I mean, would these people have some money already, or would they now be hanging in the wind for it? Uh, typically, it's per mile uh, on a weekly basis. Oh, so they would have had money like on the regular. Yeah. Okay, so none of them hopefully should be completely screwed over, or at least in the short term. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. Oh. Yeah, and, yeah and, and and yeah, like Caitlin yeah, just said, we you know, the other drivers should have been able to find out from the company instead of mm-hmm. having to find out through like Reddit or yeah. FrightWaves.com, which is where I got this particular news from. Uh that always sucks. You hear about that a lot, about how people don't find out their company shutting down until they get to work that day, and then mm-hmm. the doors are barred or whatever. Yeah. I wonder why that is. I, like, I, I what, what goes into the thought of the protection of information is so much more important than our employees that mm. we're just not going to tell anybody, any, anybody anything relevant until, like, yeah. never. Never. Right. These employees don't even find out. They have to just show up to work. Yeah, I, I sense I sense pride on that one a little bit, maybe pride and maybe a little bit of fear that their employees will justifiably so, metaphorically rip them a new asshole. Right. That's less likely to happen if they let people know that shit's about to go down. Yeah, I mean it's like if you fucked up, own it. Yeah, you may have a new asshole at the end of the day. <laughs> but you can get over it, you can heal from it, and you can move on. Mm. And so can everybody else that you fucked over. Uh, speaking of fucking people over. So, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> so this next story I, I found on Twitter, and and again, another little bit of inside baseball. I put links with it. This one doesn't have a link on our thing because I wrote this myself because this guy posted about it on Twitter. Including the letter that I'm going to be reading with it. Now, I want to preface it by saying that if it's not already been clear, I am pro sex worker. I am pro, you know, porn and everything like that. You know, make it safe, make it regulated, all that good shit. Give, you know, give any, you know, give your sex workers an, a way to legally fight back against the creeps that will come in and try and take advantage of them in their business. And there are a lot of them. So, yep. so that 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 should give everybody, new and old, a new or fresh perspective on why I, I put this story in. On Twitter, Congress critter Jim Banks, a Republican of Indiana, posted a copy of his letter to Attorney General uh, Bill Barr, calling for his anti-porn rhetoric to be made into law because he has a child fetish, which is clearly not healthy. Now, to, and I use that in the George Carlin sense, not in the he is a pedophile sense. So, okay. So I, I want to make that clear because uh, I know there's going to be some assholes going to be like, "Wait, you calling him?" No. <laughs> uh, For those so, of us who are not that familiar with George Carlin, what's exactly is the reference? Uh, it, it refers to a bit from his 1999 special "You Are All Diseased," in which he talks about how we, how we, in terms of America, focuses entirely too much on children. In terms of like keeping them safe, you know the the whole idea of what well, somebody think of the children, you know that sort of thing, and that idea, and the way the way that and, and I've mostly seen it in especially lately in conservative circles, 
where you have to think of the children. What about the children? You know, it, it, it gets to the point to where it's like, are you okay? Yeah. And it's not healthy. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. So this letter, which was signed by Banks along with three other members of Congress, and I'm going to read it in full, and it, and we're going to, you know, yeah, we're definitely going to pick it apart. Uh, we write to you today out of concern for the rule of law as well as the welfare of our people. Why did the do- why did why did I just see a dog running by? Uh, <laughs> Was he uh, happy? Uh, well, uh, uh, rule of law, dog whistle. As far as I know, uh, the internet and other evolving technologies are fueling the explosion of obscene pornography. I suppose an obscene. Uh, by making it more accessible and visceral. The explosion, this explosion in pornography coincides with an increase in violence towards women and an increase in the volume of human trafficking as well as child pornography. Um, citation needed? Yep. Anybody? Uh, there's, there's, I don't understand the correlation entirely. Me neither. Uh, victims are not limited to those directly exploited, however, and include society writ large. This phenomenon is especially harmful to youth who are being exposed to obscene pornography at exponentially younger ages. Or maybe parents aren't doing their damn jobs, or in some cases, parents are trying to do their jobs, but their child is a stubborn shit. Yep. So, uh, fortunately, U.S. obscenity laws exist that, if enforced, can... Oh, God, that I'm going to have a problem with this word. Ameliorate... Basically... Ameliorate. Ameliorate. Yeah. Thank you. This problem. As you well know from your previous term as a U.S. Attorney, attorney General, when you effectively shut down the pornography industry and dramatically decreased child pornography in America. Let me give you let me give you a hint. Pornography industry never shut down. It's always been going. It's been going forever. And it'll keep going because we like our porn. In general. In general. You know, and in terms of dramatically decreased child pornography, I don't have any figures on that, but I'm willing to bet that you it didn't stop it. It just went underground. Yep. You know, because you're, you're, you're attacking the wrong people. Right. Uh, those U.S. laws prohibit distribution of obscene pornography on the Internet, on cable slash satellite TV, in hotels and motels, by retail or wholesale establishments, and by common carrier. Yet the enforcement of obscenity laws was stopped by the Obama administration when, a, when Attorney General Eric Holder disbanded the Obscenity Prosecution Task Force in the Criminal Division. In August 2016, then-candidate Donald J. Trump signed the first-ever anti-pornography pledge. I'm pretty sure that's not the first one. I'm willing to bet. But I don't. But that's a part of history I don't know. This asserted that, if elected, Trump would enforce the federal obscenity laws to stop the explosion of obscene pornography. You're asking Trump to do this. Uh, that, that's just destined for failure right there. Uh, this pledge has so far been ignored in the Trump administration with the result that the harms of illegal pornography have continued unabated, affecting children and adults so acutely to the point that 15 state legislatures have declared that pornography is causing a public health crisis. It is imperative that you follow through on this important campaign promise made by Mr. Trump. Given the pervasiveness of obscenity, it's our recommendation that you declare the prosecution of obscene pornography a criminal justice priority and urge your U.S. attorneys to bring prosecutions against major producers and distributors of such material. We urge you to take this simple yet important step toward protecting the lives of those affected by those long ignored crimes. I realize I'm speeding up because I am almost done. Fuck this guy. Uh, we look forward to your response regarding this request and another action the Department of Justice is prepared to take in light of these abuses. Sign, you know, Jim Banks and all these other... Oh, Thank gobbledygookers. You. Uh, I don't even know what word I said, but whatever. So, okay. You want to talk obscenity laws. You want to make this a priority in the Department of Justice. Let me tell you something. Even if, you know, well, we'll, we'll let, I'll be generous. And let's grant that pornography is as harmful as you say. Let's grant this for a moment. There are things that I would say are more harmful than pornography, such as cops shooting and killing unarmed minorities for being unarmed minorities. We have literal concentration camps at the goddamn border with families being torn apart because Trump doesn't like brown people. And I know he's not the only one behind it, but you know what? He's the guy in charge. 
you know, we have so many other issues. We have Russians looking to hack into our elections and driving wedges between everybody. And it's been working. But no, apparently the biggest issue you have, Representative Banks, is I don't like porn, so nobody else should see it either. Fuck you. <laughs> <sighs> it's just, where, 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 what the, f you know, yeah, this is probably the same guy that would not have a problem if, you know, I'm, I'm willing to bet because Melania Trump has done sex work, you know, nude photos and that and the like. Right. But I'm willing to bet this guy turns a blind eye to that. Oh, yeah, it's always uh, bad when it's not the stuff that I want it to be or when it... Uh, doesn't affect the people that uh, I associate with. Mm -hmm. It's there's always a, a condition to go along with it, and you know it's not cool. Yeah. Well, I, and I'm willing Adam, to. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Adam was around when you first posted this, so obviously we had a look at it, and we had the discussion of where is the line between regular pornography and obscene pornography, and we agreed. <laughs> That if it's two pretty young women, that's okay because they're lonely and just keeping each other company. Or if it's just a simple suck and fuck, maybe that's okay. But if it's two guys or if you're getting into more kink areas, then that's where it starts. Like, how do you define a line between, mm -hmm. you know, the okay pornography and the not okay pornography? Yeah. You're either all or against, you know? Yeah. yeah. Although I'm willing to bet, I I I made I made the quip when when obscene pornography came up. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I I made the quip, but I'm willing to bet he's describing all pornography as obscene, even if he does secretly get off to lesbian porn, which this guy probably does. Again, I, I'm I'm speculating. I might want to make that clear. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and let's see, coincides with an increase in violence towards women. No, because. I I, I I fully admit that I have a lot of porn on hand that I can look at whenever I want. I'm not going around and beating women, and I'm not going around trying to get in the pants of every woman I know or see. I mean, that's, that's just because I have this thing called self-control. Yeah. You know? And I also, I also understand that if I do it, I'm going to get my ass kicked because I'm not rich. You know, yeah. right? I, people don't put enough stock into um, just putting the onus on the person's behavior. Yeah, yeah. Rather, rather than pointing the finger at something else in society uh, that makes all people behave this way, and and I think blanketing all people like that is is not a good move. No, it's not. Uh. The thing with trafficking and the child pornography. Okay couple of points on the child thing first mm -hmm. i peruse certain websites that have adult entertainment on them oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. one thing if people don't look at the pornography for whichever reason that's fine you're, you're allowed to not look at it as well yeah, yeah. is the fandom um, for one of a better term is very self-policing and they're like we like this website get that fucking child shit off of here now we will report you yeah mm -hmm. yeah and and that's, and that's that's been a thing that uh, I've noticed a lot in the porn industry. Now, yeah. now if you want to talk about it from an industry standpoint, yeah, there are issues. Every industry has its own issues. And like I mentioned on Twitter, the difference between working in porn and working in Walmart, regardless of how you get there, Walmart, you know, you you get to the end of your day and you go home with a sore foot and maybe a collapsed arch or two. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's experience there. But you work in something like porn, you you know, if you're a performer, you at least get to have all the endorphins because hey, you're having an or at least one orgasm. Yeah. And that's gonna get the and that's gonna get that flowing and that's gonna make it feel a little bit better. You know. So you don't get that when you work at Walmart. And again, like I said, there are issues in both of them. You know, in Walmart and in, and in porn itself, there are issues. But what again? What this guy, what what he's going for is not it. And there's also one other thing. There's also a very important thing. We have we have called uh, the First Amendment. That is, you know, protects freedom of speech and expression and all of that. And you know, we we were talking earlier about art being subjective. Porn can be art. Just because it's art that can get you all riled up and and get you horny and everything doesn't make it less art. I mean, for crying out loud, there, you know. 
Hirohiko Araki made a character who got his first boner from the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yes, that is a JoJo reference. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh. So, <laughs> take a shot. Uh. So, so you got quite far in this week. I'm, I'm quite impressed. Yeah, but <laughs> but still, it is subjective, and just because it 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 it, it sexually stimulates you doesn't mean it's a, not art. So yeah, here's it, here's a way to take this conversation. Okay, go for the, it. The justification of like porn bad because. That what they're trying to say is that porn is bad because it's causing violence against, against women and children. And mm. that's that's not entirely untrue. Mm. Like, there are connections with, like, sex trade and violence. Like, those are, there are undeniable connections there. But yeah. a lot of that is, like, that's not necessarily the industry per se so much as society. Mm. Yeah. Like... The way society says, oh, sex work is illegitimate, so the people who do it are bad people, so I can treat them like trash. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and like anything involved with child pornography is obviously not mm -hmm. a victimless crime or anything like that. Yeah. But um, the, this is, it's not that porn causes people to be violent to to, pe to other people. It's the way society chooses to treat people who do sex work mm. yes. and, and yeah. gives a pass to people who are involved in child pornography. It's, it's, it's actually crazy to me because you always hear stories about people who go to prison and then uh, other prisoners find out that they uh, fucked a kid and then they kill that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if somebody's rich and they get into po child pornography, then they just get a free pass because it's not hurting anybody. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. that sort of thing looking right at you roman polanski so like there but there's a societal thing about about little girls let's mm -hmm. i mean we could put that out on the table that mm -hmm. we as a society american or otherwise fetishize young girls we yeah. want like uh, it's so gross to think about but yeah um like we we want our celebrities to constantly look super super young um mm. and like if you look at say um uh the beauty industry in korea mm -hmm. oh my mm -hmm. god the obsession with um their appearance and and how we just want to look perfect and young and photoshopped at all times right and, and we have to be beautiful and young forever it's really it gets pretty gross at some point, yeah. yeah. Because the it's it's it really is this fetishization of youth, and I'm not just talking about like looking like you're sexy in your mid twenties. If you think about anyone with a Catholic schoolgirl thing, you're just like, why? Why psychologically? Why is this? And yeah. it's because we we as a society, a lot of people just want to fuck teenagers or younger. Um, <laughs> And it's and it's gross and it's wrong, and right. we we all know it, but we all try and justify it. But really, I think that's a part of it. Is is like, it it's not so much that child pornography is actively hurting people all the time. It's that our our desire to have it is creating a market. Mm. Yeah, our our the way we treat girls um, and young women is has created a market for this sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the I... way we treat sex work in this country yeah. has created an attitude that violence is okay. And that's why we always talk about on this show how um, sex work needs to be legalized. It mm -hmm. needs to be legalized and unionized and protected. Like, yes. we, we need to make it legal so that we can give people protection so that we can stop violence. It's not like somebody's watching some really fucking crazy porn and then starts, oh, uh, this happened in porn, so I can do that in real life. It's, it's really the way society has chosen to treat these professions. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's stigmatized, stigmatized, basically. Yeah, basically. absolutely. Yeah. Because and, and that's that is the I think I think that is one of the major overall things. It's just let's 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 fuck the stigma, you know. Yeah. Like, like you said, like, you know, and we've said it before on the show, legalize it, you know? Yes. Uh, I, I, the schoolgirl thing, maybe because I grew up in the country and I've worn a school uniform, I never understood it. 
Uh, I never understood it from an age perspective, but mm. I like the aesthetic part, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. like the look is, is fine. Because I, I, usually whenever I would see somebody wearing that, they were of age at the time the picture was taken, so... Yeah. So it's that's I'm, that's I'm knee deep into the anime fandom and like we could talk for hours about how fucked up some shit gets in the anime fandom. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was actually um have you um this is not this is an old song now. Um uh, it's Kinky Boots by uh Patrick Bagoon and uh, whoever his um co star was from the Avengers. And it in the song it actually has a line of sexy little schoolgirls. Yeah, it's a little. <laughs> yeah, it would have been better, like the you, 60s, but yeah, it's like... yeah. You better, talk- to- you, you better be talking. You better be talking about small college chicks. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, it's actually this. quite a, a peppy little song until you get to that line. It's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to 2019. Now I have to back we- away from it. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Welcome to 2019, where we actually take a look at the lyrics we grew up with, and we're like, yeah, that's not as good as we thought it was. <laughs> no. It's like the looking back at celebrities from decades and decades past going, oh, you married someone at 14. That is... No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Big no. Uh, but, yeah, so... We're going to get it from that, and we're going we're gonna, to, you know, as I like to try and do, is... Try to light considerably, comparatively lighten up as we go on. Yes. So this one is definitely comparatively lighter than the last two stories. Um, so this one's out of Florida. Take a shot. Take a shot. Uh, police have charged a Florida man with battery after he reportedly punched another customer in the checkout line at a Walmart store. It happened Wednesday evening at the neighborhood market store on Pine Island Road at Nicholas Parkway. According to Cape Coral Police, 69-year-old Henry Henry Harvey became angry over customers ahead of him in line taking too long at the register. Which, okay, relatable. An argument resulted in Harvey punching the victim in the head. Officers later located Harvey at his home and arrested him. The victim was not seriously injured. I've been impatient in lines for one reason or another. Either I'm in a hurry or... I, I, as I probably have alluded to, I do suffer from a collapsing arch in my left foot, and that kind of fucks me up for standing for long periods of time for a lot of times. So there are times where I just really need to get to a place to sit down, and this person in front of me is just taking too goddamn long. But unlike this old asshole, I act, again, self-control. <laughs> self-control, I think, is the uh, is probably a term that you should coin and use very frequently on this show to combat a lot of the stories that seem to crop up. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, just, uh, again, understandable why, but don't go punching people. Yeah, just, uh. There's really, and especially we're going to hear more and more stories about this as the year goes on, because it's that time of year where everyone's out shopping. Yeah. The but it's most like the, the wonderful time of the year. <laughs> It's so not... God, I worked retail for so long, I can't enjoy the holidays. Oh, like no. Um, yeah, I did too. <laughs> yeah. There's just such a lack of empathy. Like, I too have gotten very impatient standing in line with somebody making hell in front of me, or especially at the drive through mm. Nothing incenses me quite like having to wait forever in a drive through because then what's the point? Yeah. But... The fact is, is that people are people, and life is hard, and even some shit that's going on in front of me in the drive through line is still, like, there's still something going on there, and I need to be sympathetic to the fact that life happens because life is hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and again, it's like, it's just have a little self-control. Don't be a huge fucking dick about everything, and certainly don't just assault people because you have impatient issues. God. Right. It's just yeah, mm. I I do I get like um I don't drive so I don't get road rage but I get like pavement rage where people <laughs> like you you're walking past the person you're trying to get past them and they keep going with you and you're like fucking move <laughs> but you know <laughs> you, you do that internally and you just yeah. as soon as there's a yeah. gap in the in the crowd you you just whip past them. My my biggest pet peeve, besides being at the drive through is when I'm at the grocery store and mm. somebody is standing next to their cart and they're taking up the whole aisle. Oh, mm. God. And I'm like, I need to get exactly where you are and I need you to, like, oh, my God. I get so impatient. I start going around the other aisle to sneak in around them and then they've moved 
five feet down, it's still exactly where I need to be. And I'm like, you can shop and not take up an entire aisle. You know that, right? right? Yeah. But it's just like, you know what? It's, it's not worth getting mad over. Yeah. I will, ad- I will admit that that's one of the few times where I will actually very nicely say something to somebody if I need to get through there. Because, you know, I'm, I, I, I will be impatient enough but not be an ass about it. Like, you know, I just it's just a simple, hey, excuse me, I need to get through here. And usually when you ask them nicely like that, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, and, and they'll pull their stuff aside. And that's, yeah. you know, that's okay. Because you're being nice. You're not being a dick. You're not saying, hey, get the fuck out of my way. Poof. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. You're just being nice. See what a little yeah. niceness can get you guys? Holidays uh, are supposed to be so nice and... Uh, it's just kind of the opposite. And we're going to hear a lot more stories like this as we get closer to Christmas, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, 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 the holidays really do bring out the worst in people. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever worked retail before Christmas, you know what that is. Yes. Yeah. And to everybody who drives for Amazon, whether it's over the road or whether it's the local stuff, hi, Aaron. <laughs> we, our thoughts are with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I cringe every time I order something on Amazon just because I I know what their warehouses are like, and I work in a warehouse, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Bye now. <laughs> yeah, I, I I worked for Amazon for like half a day, and it was like, no, I can't handle it. I couldn't oh, do God. it. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh, and, well, and, am, and at that point, it wasn't even as bad as it's been recently. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, I was so. doing one of my other sort of peeves that I can really, and maybe maybe you guys have had this as well, is like, I've had it when I've had to come up, you know, coming out the store, and for some reason I need to pause or do something. I sidestep, so I'm away from the door. Yes. yes. Then you get people who don't do that and are in the doorway. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, that that if, if, again, if I was an a- if I was more of an asshole, because I, I already. I, I, feel myself as a little bit of an asshole you kind of have yeah. to be in this in this economy sure. but if i was more of an asshole i'd be like i'd be like motherfucker get out of the way before i yeet you into traffic yeah <laughs> uh, thankfully i don't say that uh. well, um where i live like my local town area is completely pedestrianized so i won't necessarily have that threat but it'd be just like maybe push the door a little bit harder than normal yeah yeah there you go uh, so our next story, next story similar, similar similar kind of thing, kind of thing. Out, of out of Salt Lake City. Hi, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> yes, hello, Aaron. A uh, 28-year-old man was arrested last month after face-punching a couple of McDonald's employees for getting his order wrong. Victor Again, same story. I know, right? <laughs> same story, different different kind of verse. Victor Jimmy oh Castro allegedly ordered food from McDonald's inside of Leighton Walmart. Court document states he then left with his food, but later returned to the fast food restaurant, walking behind the front registers into the employee area where customers are not allowed. And I just want to say at this point, the employees will be totally justified in grabbing his ass and yeeting him out into traffic. Yeah. Castro then proceeded to assault an employee at the register with his fists, hitting the employee in the face, the probable cause statement said. He then walked further back into the business, into the kitchen area, and assaulted another employee with his fists, also hitting the employee in the face, the court document states. I love how detailed they're getting! They could just say, hey, you know what, he punched two people in the face. Uh. Hits two people with his fists. Yes! Uh. He was additionally heard saying, you got my order wrong. The incident was captured on surveillance cameras and Castro was identified by another officer on the Davis Crime Bulletin. He was arrested and booked into jail for third-degree felony burglary and two misdemeanor counts of assault. I get the assault. Well, yes. Where, yeah. where does the burglary come in? Thank you! That's what I was wondering. Like, <laughs> what? Uh, and again, it goes to just don't be an asshole because I've been to plenty of places that they get my order wrong. In fact, the mm-hmm. McDonald's in Chipley, Florida was very notorious for that for a good hot minute back in mm-hmm. back you know in my 20s but mm-hmm. but they've gotten better and there are plenty of fast food restaurants not just mcdonald's but otherwise that, that you'll see in a lot of these truck stops or whatever and most restaurants most fast food restaurants they're good and asking if you want to eat it eat in or carry out normally when i go in to eat it's you know i have time to sit down and enjoy my meal and a lot of places don't even ask they just assume and they're like, oh, oh, you're getting it to go. Okay. You know, maybe it's because of how I'm dressed. As a, as a driver, I dress very comfortably. So maybe they just assume. But, you know, you should ask. I would, I would think that would be in, like, the, the, the company 
things there. You know, hey, ask them if they want to eat in or out. And, and in McDonald's, they have the, the kiosks now that you got the touchscreen stuff where you can tell them you're eating in. And thankfully, those have been a little bit better on that, about that one because they realize, oh, wait, he is eating here. Oh, shit. And then there are ones that, you know, you tell them you're eating in, but they ignore that and put it in a to-go bag anyway because apparently that doesn't get through to the back. But despite my irritation at all of that, what am I not doing? I'm not going in and beating motherfuckers. Right. Because guess what? They're not paid enough to deal with this shit. No. They just aren't. They're, okay, they're not paid enough to do the shit they normally do. Because, yeah, 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 you know, late stage capitalism, rah, rah, rah. And all that, and all that bullshit. So they're not paid enough to deal with this. And, and, and Castro, I, I hope, uh, you know, fuck you, buddy. Just, just fuck you. Uh, Oh, uh, so so uh, who who wants to take the first stab at this one besides me? <laughs> this uh, is an asshole. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what else you can add on to that. I, yeah. I mean, there's there's the obvious. If you had a problem with your order, maybe like check your bag before you leave or something. If it was supposed to be a to go, just have a quick look and say you know mm -hmm. double check or get them to read it out for you. Uh, you uh, presumably there's a printed receipt. Yeah. There are ways of doing it. Even if you've left the building, gone to your car, and checked it there, you've still got the, there's just still be a window where you can go back in and say, "Hey guys, look, sorry, there's a there's an issue here." Yeah. Not yeah. punching people. And how, what what was the time? Was it like um like not within like ten fifteen minutes, but like a longer? Did it say uh, how long it was? I, I it just says later. Yeah. yeah. To to me, later suggests at least half an hour. Maybe that's yeah. just me. Yeah. Yeah. And then who knows? It's, it's Salt Lake City. The traffic might have been bad, and he could have probably never not got to it till he got home, which is, well. Yeah, okay. So. But even it, then, you're still like, there was a problem. You know, I was hungry. I ate it. Sorry. But, you know, there still was a problem. Is there something we can do about it? There's still ways and means. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kat, Kaylin, y'all got anything? <laughs> McDonald's is not worth going to jail for. Yeah. It's really not. Like, no. like, this is, like, the biggest thing that I'm hung up on is, like, if you're going to go to jail for something or get arrested for something, don't let it be McDonald's. Like, <laughs> maybe Wendy's. <laughs> maybe a Wendy's chicken sandwich I would punch somebody for, but, um... <laughs> like... But, like yeah, you start a fight in a McDonald's, then you end up getting in the news like this. Exactly. And is this is this what you want your legacy to be, man? Like yeah. seriously, like your grandmother's gonna read that. Don't don't go to jail for Wendy or for for McDonald's. It's not worth it. Like in reality, mm. if you think about it for even twelve seconds, no, it's just some fucking fast food. Yeah. They are not paid enough to deal with your with your shit, your anger management issues that you clearly have, or like that. That is not a mentally healthy person who's just going in there going, "I am gonna hurt people because they messed up my my nugs." Right. You know, yeah. that's not a mentally healthy person, and they don't get paid enough to to deal with your issues. And certainly, you should not be getting that worked up over some fucking McDonald's. Yeah, just, yeah. no. I mean, unless they put cyanide in it, in which case, yeah, go for it. But seriously, <laughs> it's not worth it. It's, no, it's not. In the grand scheme of the universe, yeah. it's all poop tomorrow, so what does it fucking matter? <laughs> Basically, yeah. I mean, and if it's something like, oh, they put pickles on and, and you told them not to, just take the pickles off. And, and I, I, can, I can do that, and I hate pickles. So I was like, no, mm. oh, they put pickles on there. It, it would still have that pickly bun, but again, as we've said, there are there are many, many steps in between <laughs> <laughs> your your order being wrong and then assaulting people. Yes. Yeah. Like, therapy is a good in-between step <laughs> that you should get through before you go assault someone because they got your order wrong. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to... Oh wow, we have we've been running a little long, so I'm gonna to get to this last news story here, uh, out of Prescott Alley, Arizona, Prescott Valley rather, Arizona. 
Uh, Who's like, pick a state. Yes. Pick a state. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of Arizona. Uh, I have a lot of friends who live, uh, who's lived around Prescott Valley. So, I've had yeah. friends out of there too, yeah. Yay. So, uh, but anyways, this guy is not one of them because I don't know who this guy is. Uh, David Keller isn't a beekeeper and he's never owned any bees. But when he wanted to prove a point last month, he brought a beehive as a service animal. Yes, you heard that right. A beehive. Oh my god, this is amazing. A lot of people thought it was hilarious, including us. And a lot of people were getting upset, Keller said, explaining that the whole thing started after he saw what appeared to be a service dog misbehaving. I could very easily tell that it was not a service animal because it was pulling the owner to the parking lot, he said. Now, in fairness, we don't ha we don't get much more to for that because it could be a service dog trying to get their master. Hey, hey, come on. We're getting you out of danger. Come on. So we don't know that context, but we'll, we'll, we'll take the context as it is for right now. Uh, so he decided to take a stand. I was thinking that it's just too easy to get these animals to be service animals, Keller said. He went to a site called USAServiceDogRegistration.com and successfully registered the picture of the beehive as a service animal. <laughs> I wanted to bring awareness to the issue that anyone could do this, Keller said. We reached out, we being the uh, publication that, that did this, uh, reached out to USAServiceDogRegistration.com, but nobody responded to the comments for, request for comment. Uh, a quick, quick, web, quick web search, bleh, I rented this tongue, turns up many service animal registration sites. But Keller's stunt showed that some of them do very little to verify the animals they're registering. They're very silly. They don't mean anything, said Jamie Carden, who trains service dogs at Arizona Dog Sports in Scottsdale. You can, pay, you can go pay for a registry on one of those websites, and basically, you're just paying for a piece of paper and to put a name on a list. Carden says these sites do highlight a real problem people trying to pass off pets as legitimate service animals. Training is how you tell whether it's a service animal or not, Carden said. Plus, federal law says a service animal can only be a dog or miniature horse, so no bees. The law is pretty clear that a service animal is an animal that is trained to perform a specific task related to the disability, said Say In, an attorney with the Arizona Center for Disability Law. A service animal does not need to be registered anywhere, let alone on a third-party website. Keller hopes all the buzz around this B5 stunt oh proves his punt, proves his point rather about these uh, registration sites. It's making people believe all animals are service animals when they're not. Keller said, and there is the clear difference. And yes, I, I remember hearing stories about about the dude with like the miniature horse as a service animal, and I thought it was really weird at the time. It's still kind of weird, but you know what? If it if it works and it can work out fine, so be it. Um, yeah. But god damn. Just oh, oh what the hell! But that's amazing. That is that's like good 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 on good on uh, what's his name David Keller. Good on David Keller for for pointing all of this out and bringing this to attention. Because yeah, you'd have some absurd things like eh, it, you know you try to take an, an iguana on and it's like eh, it's my service iguana. That only works in soap operas, folks. Iguana. <laughs> yep. You know and. Although I have heard that, like, the story of like a guy who found like what was like was supposedly an empty wasp's nest, there were no wasps in there, not like no fully grown wasps in there. However, there were a whole shit ton of eggs. Oh dear. Oh no. And he had this in his room, where you know, where you know, where his smell would like permeate and, and his odor would get around. And when the wasps hatched, they would not attack him because they were born, you know, with that scent. And they're like, okay, this is safe. But anybody else come in that any anybody else comes in that room, they go right after him. Oh no, that's so strange. So attack wasps. the dude, yeah, attack wasps. We have a tile. <laughs> that would be the most effective way to keep somebody out. Would be with attack wasps. Yes. <laughs> so so if you could do something like that with bees, hey, why not? You know. Uh, yeah, but you're not going to be carrying the, those attack wasps with you because those attack wasps are comfortable in that room where that smell is. You're carrying a wasp nest into a grocery store. They're going to freak out like, oh, everything is, is dangerous. This everything is, also is true. awful. I just want like an attack wasp nest like on my front porch. <laughs> and then with a sign that says, beware. Ah! Oh. <laughs> like 
And if anybody tries to like like ding and dash or do whatever it is that they do that's super annoying mm. or or some like the the Mormons come up to your door or whatever, just be like, beware. There's <laughs> attack wasps and then they get stung and never come back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I really hope they don't have a bee allergy or. or to be <laughs> they should have be wasps. Yes, I don't uh, probably. Know. probably. Yes, you can. Yeah, I imagine people can it be allergic sense. to pretty much anything. So. Yeah, oh. um, I, ha- I do have to make the obvious joke uh, on this one though. Mm-hmm. I'm covered in bees. I'm covered in bees. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? This is I I hate the idea of people just passing off their favorite pet as a service animal. Yeah, it's yes. it's like a legitimate issue. Mm. Um, it not just because like it's annoying, but because these animals do not know how to behave mm-hmm. because they are not necessarily trained correctly. So they do not behave correctly, and if they get around other service animals, they could do harm, or around other people, like just. Mm. Don't do it, guys. Like, yeah. it's nice that you want your doggo to come into the store with you, but that is not good. Like, yeah. that's... <sighs> your pet doesn't belong everywhere all the time. It's just the way things are. Yeah, And, um, and again, because I worked retail for so long, there would be people who would try to bring mm-hmm. their pets in and stuff, and we'd have to say, nope. Yeah. That waits out in the car. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've had like puppies in arms and stuff that we've sort of like okay you're holding it so that's fair enough but there is a i found out when i was doing a retail course between jobs that there is a law in the books be, um because king charles like of you know who named the spaniels he loved his dogs so much he wanted them to be able to go everywhere so there is a law on the british statutes where you can if you have a king charles spaniel you can take that any building and nobody can stop you <laughs> interesting of course there is huh. So yeah, mm-hmm. if, I, if I had a doggo, I might consider them because they are adorable and I could take it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing that that some people do need to understand that when you have a pet, like a domesticated animal, it is okay to leave them alone for several hours throughout the day. They will be fine. Just make sure they have food. Make sure they have water. Make sure they have a place to do the business, and you're okay. It's basically all it is, whether it's dog, cat, bird, whatever. You know. Right. I think isn't there a rule if you if you have like a very young pet or a very new pet that you probably should not necessarily leave them alone for too long if you do leave them on their own like have someone who can sort of check on them. Yeah. But yeah. after that point. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. And, and it also makes a lot of sense. Oh. Uh, so with all of that said. Uh, we are going to get out of here at least for the main show because we do have the curtain call coming up for the patrons, which will probably go up uh, probably the night that this goes that this episode goes live for everybody else. So at least I think that's how I'm going to schedule it. Will yeah, everybody will know once it gets there. <laughs> um, but I do talk about that a little bit more. I did talk about that a little bit more in the uh, in the sec in the break segment earlier. So, with all of that said, uh, Kaylin, if we wanted yes. to find you on the social medias, where could we find you? For the time being, uh, check me out at Instagram. Uh, Instagram is at Mars Girl. Uh, same with YouTube is Mars Girl. Facebook is Mars Girl. Keep an eye on Twitter. That's all I'll say. Just keep an eye on Twitter. Yeah. Everywhere I am, I'm at Mars Girl. Very, very easy to find. Uh, and Michelle, if we wanted to find you, where could we find you? Uh, I have a um, YouTube where I, at the moment, I'm mostly doing film reviews and unboxings, and that is Phoenix11, that's P-H-E-O-N-I-X-1-1, and same for my Twitter, is at Phoenix11, same spelling. <sighs> and Kat, if we wanted to find you, where could we find you? Oh god, same old places. <laughs> um, you can find me on the social medias on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And if you want to check out my other shows, you can find me. Uh, we haven't had an episode of What the Fuck for a while. Uh, but the, all the back episodes are still on 1201beyond.com. And you can check out Nerd to the Third Power. It's on YouTube. And uh, look us up. We're good times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and as for me, if you want to find me on the social medias, I am on the Twitters, the Tumblers, the YouTubes, the Instagrams at gomer 21 uh, If Especially if you're a Pokemon fan, yeah, check out my Instagram. I need to start getting it a little bit more up since Sword and Shield is out and whole new shiny hunting is going on. Yay. Um, 
But uh, you can also find me on the Facebooks at Gomer the Ranting Thespian. And, of course, this and other fine programming can be found on rtgomer.com. And, of course, this show also has its own uh his own Twitter account at Thess Talk Show, T H E S Talk Show. Um, and I'm trying to think, think if I remember anything, if I'm forgetting anything. Oh, yeah. And if you're watching this on the YouTube or if you're even seeing it on like your your uh, podcasting catcher of choice, you see the lovely title card artwork that is done by the brilliant and talented Becky Hopkins. And you can find all of her stuff at Becky Hopkins.com. Com, which I am just now looking at. That should be correct. Yes, that is. <laughs> I should really, really, really know that by heart a little bit better. But, you know. But it's also all of that stuff is in the notes and the doobly-doos and all of that really good shit. And, and hey, we do have, you know, we do have a, a Reddit, you know, a, a subreddit. That's r slash thespian talk, all one word. Um, and I think... Oh, yeah, and there is also the Discord server link that should be in the doobly-doo. If you go and click it and it's not working, tell me. I will make sure you get a fresh one, um, and then I'll try and update it on that. So, But it should still be working, but, again, if you're trying to get in and it's not working, just just poke at me, and I'll fix it up for you. Um, so that, I believe, is it for this week. Again, if you're a patron, stay tuned. You're, you're going to have a curtain call segment coming up. Um, but for everybody else, thank you so much for listening. Take care, everybody. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Michelle, the Cat, and Kaylin, signing off.